Um, today's topic is talking about food storage and I'm going to be giving you my top ways that I prefer to store food. Um, spoiler alert, my top picks are probably not going to be what you think they are. My first, um, my number one, maybe not my number one, I don't know if this really is a number one, a number two, and a three, but we'll give you the first way that I prefer um, to store and um, to store food, and that is right near where I'm standing, um, and that is having it growing. Um, and so, now this is going to be a little bit different from what you're going to watch on Beard, like Prepper channels and all the things. Um, but my favorite ways of storing food are all going to be um, from a sustainability approach. Okay, so. Um, one of my top favorite ways to store food is for it to be right here in the ground growing, okay? Um, so there's a lot of crops like potatoes that we have right here. Those can grow and even once they are grown, um, they can actually just be stored right there in the ground, especially in the fall and winter. And as I need them, I can come out and harvest them and um, other root crops, especially the same way like carrots. Um, and then, you know, you have your daily things that you can come out and harvest. Like right behind me, I have all sorts of herbs. Those are things that um, I can come harvest from daily to use when I'm cooking. I have my lettuces back here that um, I can just come out and pick what I want. And the rest of it just stays there growing. Uh, it doesn't require any special preservation methods. This is just how nature intended for it to be in my my approach is what's the least amount of work to, to keep this food fresh as long as possible and to have it readily available and for me having it growing in the garden um, is it is where it's at in my opinion um, because um, I know a lot of people just think of gardening as being like this May to like July or August thing but when you really dive into starting to grow food year-round as much as possible, you're really going to cut down on the amount of food you have to preserve or do something extra with when you are able to always come out and have a fresh harvest um, of food available to you. So for us, we, are, we try to use every single day of our grow zone, um, of our growing time with our grow zone. Um, those available grow days, we try to squeeze in every single one of those, plus even more by just covering, using covers, grow covers, um, to extend our seasons even further. So for us, our fall crops this last year, they, they went all the way into um, January of the next year. On January 1st, I was still harvesting um, cabbage and all my brassicas and kale and spinach and things of that nature that were still just growing and sitting happily in our garden which really only gave me the end of january through the very first of march just that tiny little amount of time that i didn't really have a lot of anything growing out in the garden and then um, once march rolls around we can once again utilize um, covers and speed up our growing times and we start sowing all those um, early crops in again and then we have our spring crops and we um, succession plant um, so meaning like if I harvest my beans I already have started seeds and I have more plants ready to go in the ground so I get not just one harvest of beans but like three harvests of beans as my squash and zucchini plants start to die back I will like in June I will towards the end of June I will go ahead and start my squash and zucchini seeds and I'll have new plants ready to go back in their place so I get several harvests of all of these plants so um, that is my favorite way to um, store food is just growing right here in the ground where it's easy to access I don't have to I mean I do grow a lot with the thought of preservation in mind but as accessibility no need for refrigeration um, canning or anything like that if you're growing and harvesting and eating it as it grows um, that is a great way to store your food in the ground okay guys while we are talking about 
having food in the garden as a sustainable way to store food. I think it's important to take a quick moment and highlight the most sustainable of those um, ways to store food. And one of those is going to be any type of crop, any type of crop that is um, a cut and come again or is a um, producer of multiple harvest, okay? So one is going to be any type of leafy greens. Um, so as I come in here and I pick off um, some of these gorgeous leaves and I take them in and eat them, this plant is actually in the middle of producing right here in the middle new baby leaves that will then turn into these. And as long as I'm harvesting them correctly, they'll just keep giving me um, greens for an extended amount of time. And then when they it is finished giving me all of the leaves it wants to give me. It will then send up some shoots, it will bolt, it will put on flowers, and it will have seeds, and it will give me seeds that I can then plant and start all over again. So leafy greens are a great sustainable um, way to store food and because it's going to keep giving to you daily for an extended period of time. Over here we have celery as well. The celery, uh, once you plant it, Unlike when you go buy celery at the store, where you buy a stalk of celery and that's it, when you're done with it, you've ate it all, you go back and you buy more. When you are growing celery, you can harvest the outermost stalks and it will continue to grow and produce. And it's sitting out here nice and healthy in our garden. And I don't have to have it in the refrigerator. It doesn't have to keep taking up any space inside. Um, over here, you can't see over here, but we have also have carrots. Um, like I said before, once they are grown, they can actually just be stored in the ground. You can come out here and just harvest them as I need them. The same with potatoes. Um, and then um, just many things like that in the garden that um, are really great crops because you can continue to either cut from them, you can just store them out in the ground. And then you also have things like back here behind me. We have squash and zucchini, um, tomatoes. Those are, those are plants that are going to give me a continued harvest throughout a, a pretty extended amount of time um, instead of only getting one big harvest of something like corn per se, which is great. We need those kind of crops as well. But on the sustainability, um, as far as just being able to come out here, cut something, eat it for supper, things like leafy greens and root crops and um, squashes and um, different things of that nature, those are going to be great because they're going to continue to feed you for months. Okay guys, sorry for the wind. It is a little bit windy out today, but my second way that is my favorite way of storing food is right behind me. and the goats and the ducks, all of the livestock that we have, that is my next favorite way of storing food. So when you drive by a field of animals or cows, whatever um, type of livestock, um, I don't think that we usually drive by and see walking refrigerators or walking um, storage, food storage, right? But that is basically like what they are. Um, so by keeping livestock, um, you have a constant supply of food. Whether that be um, that you're growing them for meat or dairy, like for our goats. Our goats are dual for meat and for dairy. Um, our chickens are dual purpose. They are both for meat and for protein for eggs. Um, our ducks are, could be for both. They are both for meat and for eggs. They are all basically just walking little um, sustainable um, factories. They're just walking around out here. I don't have to do much at all to, um, to have food all the time. Um, you don't have to, I don't, I'm not having to stockpile ridiculous amounts of powdered milk or um, powdered eggs in a can or anything like that. Um, so as long as the, 
the one key to that is is that you need breeding pairs like right here. This is our little pup. I mean, we have our does and these are our babies behind us. Um, but as long as you have a couple of good breeding pairs, um, you are going to always have um, a, you're always going to have a sustainable replenishing source of dairy or meat or whatever. So that is the key to that. Is, you know. Um, if I have does and a buck and they are reproducing and they're having babies, those babies are either going to be um, giving us more meat um, or we're going to be selling them. But this is going to be a reoccurring thing over and over and over again. And it is one less thing you have to go to the store to get. Um, because they're just here, they're, they're there, um, it is easy, they're relatively low maintenance, it doesn't take a lot of daily um, time just to feed our goats. They don't really, mainly they are on pasture, they do eat just a little bit of, of feed, um, a little bit of hay. Um, our chickens, they just, they are out free range on pasture and then of course they get a little bit of feed. They get a lot of food from our garden as well, um, which is another great thing about having a big garden is that you're not only feeding yourself, but you're feeding your livestock really good food um, that in turn turns into more really good food for you. Um, so as long as you have breeding pears, um, you're, you're not going to run out of food. It's, it's just food walking around that you don't have to refrigerate or freeze or dehydrate or can or do any of those extra things um, they're right here available like um, if we I know a lot of people throw a lot of like meat birds for instance to um, mass butcher but um, I know my own family throughout the years growing up and um, being very poor in Appalachia they didn't they didn't go buy meat chicks and mass produce them. They just kept flocks of chickens and when they wanted to have fried chicken for supper, they came out and they got a older bird and they um, pulled it right there and then and fried it and they had available meat to them anytime they wanted it without having to go through all the extra trouble of preserving it. Same thing for the milk. Um, you have available fresh dairy without the need of any extra, I love these leaves, um, without any extra work in preserving it or without even refrigeration. So they are my second tip on favorite ways to um, store food. So my first one was I love to store my food out on the ground in the garden. My second favorite way to store food is just out here alive and breathing and walking around on two or four legs or whatever. Um, and then I'm going to take you and show you my next favorite way to store food. Okay guys, before I take you in to show you my next favorite way to store food, um, let's just talk for a minute about this whole idea of sustainability and what does that even mean? So the basic idea of sustainability is that um, it is a system that has as many loops closed in it as possible um, where all those systems are working together and they all replenish themselves, okay? Um, and so within this, um, for example, when I'm saying my favorite way to store food is to grow in the ground, that food actually has to be fed and the way that um, my garden food is fed is to compost from our goats and chickens and ducks, okay? And from the, um, like the, the weeding and all the things that happen in the garden as well as, well, as, well as grass clippings, just things here on our property. Um, so I feed the goats and chickens extra things from the garden, they then provide manure that we compost that refeeds the garden. And it becomes sort of a closed loop system. Um, another system within the garden is, um, and it's spoiler alert, what I'm going to talk about next, which is seeds. 
Um, whenever I am growing heirloom seeds, um, open pollinated seeds, I can save from those um, from these plants. So let's say I take one tomato seed and I plant it. I am not going to just get one tomato seed back. Um, I am going to get thousands of tomato seeds possibly back, millions over a few years because that one tomato seed is going to turn into um, a whole tomato plant. We could have 30, 40, 50 tomatoes on it and each one of those can have hundreds of seeds. So in one growing period I've taken my one little seed and I've just turned it into this abundance of seeds where I could go from having one tomato plant to having hundreds of to a thousand tomato plants next year if I save all the seeds from those tomatoes. Um, and those tomatoes are going to also feed me. I'm going to save those seeds. I'm going to put them back in the ground. And they're just going to keep giving me more seeds. And because I will always be replenishing my seed supply, and not only replenishing, but actually getting more and more seeds every single year, um, it's like this amazing cycle of sustainability where I'm not having to go to the store every year and buy seeds. Um, and I'm actually now even having enough to give away or to sell. And that is the beauty of sustainability and doing things more naturally is that you're not always going to have not only enough, but you're always going to be um, walking away with this bounty and abundance of even more than what you started with. It's like, it's crazy how everything multiplies. And the same thing will go for like my animals. So Nibbles here is pregnant. I bought Nibbles. As a baby, her, I bought her mom, and she had two babies, Nibbles and Ricky. And so Nibbles is now pregnant, and she will probably have two or three babies. And then when they are old enough, if I breed them, um, they will each have two or three babies each. And within just a year to two years, I, went, I will have went from having three goats to having, go from having three goats um, if, you, if you breed them all with a buck, then you will, in a year, you could just ha you could have 9, 12, 15 babies over the course of a year or two. And then they have babies within the next year. You've quadrupled that number again. And everything just multiplies. So like chickens, I have one chicken and that chicken lays eggs every day. And I put them all in the incubator. And those turn into, you know, in one week I incubate seven eggs. That one chicken has now turned into eight chickens. Um, those chickens can either lay me more eggs or they can become meat for us. Um, and then they will all lay eggs that can either become meat birds or eggs for us. Um, so it's like before long, it all just snowballs to where you are living in this overwhelming amount of abundance that can often even be hard to keep up with. Um, and that is the beauty of sustainability, is that I'm not having to store away um, a year's worth of food. I have a year's worth of food around me right here. All I have to do is maintain it properly. I'm not, and that food will always be replenishing itself. Whereas if I just go to a store and buy cans of food, which there's nothing wrong with that, and I would encourage you to do that as well. Um, but when I go buy just a can of food, and I eat that can of food, I still... I, I then have nothing and I have to go back and buy another can of food to replace it. Um, so sustainability is always replenishing itself, whereas being a consumer and going to the store and buying things, when you're out of that, you're just out of it and you have to go buy more. Okay, so let's go on to the next favorite way to store food. Okay guys, so not outside anymore. I'm in here in my garage, but I want to show you my, hopefully you can hear me better too. I've got to figure out something to do better for my sound quality. I'm going to get a better microphone or something because the wind here has just been weird. <laughs> we don't usually have windy weather, but um, so some of my past videos have been a little aggravated that that wind was interfering more than what I would like. So I hope that this, the part I just made before it, that you can hear it well. So hopefully you can hear me better. And we're going to talk about my third favorite way to store food, and that is seeds. So, um, this is, it might be my favorite 
way to store food, honestly, because you can just store so much food in such a tiny amount of space. And like this one package of seeds has the ability to give me more seeds that I can then store away. Um, so I can literally buy seeds one time, one time investment and harvest seeds from my um, plants every year. And that is it. Um, it takes up hardly any space, any space. Like um, this probably is holding enough seeds to plant out just about my entire garden that you saw, probably more. Um, so it does not require any crazy amount of space or storage requirements or anything like that um, other than it, they do guess when they get in full start to play so I actually store mine uh, away in like a, a tote like this if I plan on using them in the next few years and then for really long-term storage um, I put them in my freezer um, but I mean this takes up hardly any space this is this is it's crazy you know when you think of this takes up less space than one tomato plant, but yet it is holding 50 tomato plants in it. Um, so maybe my possibly, may possibly be my favorite way to store food is just in seeds. It's just nature's way. Seeds are literally nature's way of preserving food. Um, and so uh, I do like to keep some packages that are like this that are already airtight sealed, so oxygen absorbers, and then these are for my more long-term backup um, seed storage, and then seeds that I've either saved that I plan on using the next few years, I keep those, um, because I have a lot of seeds. I keep them in containers like this. I bought this, uh, actually I think about Hobby Lobby, it's supposed to be like photo um, storage organizers, but instead, you see here, this one is okra, um, beets, um, let's see here, onions. I just have written on there, and then I have my seeds stored away in those. And this is um, pest proof for the most part. And then I just store these away somewhere cool and dry. And I have all the seeds I need for the year to live um, in these. So that might be my favorite. Seeds may be my favorite. And so then on to the next favorite way to store food is going to be, um, you know, we just talk about having food growing in your garden that you can harvest from daily so you don't have to do a lot of preservation. But if you're growing a large garden at the end of the day, at some point in time, you're going to have food that you're going to have to figure out what to do with. And um, one of my next favorite ways of storing food by canning it. And this can include um, veggies, fruit, um, meat, eggs, you name it. Um, anything that I just showed you outside that I prefer to keep alive and growing or walking around. Um, once it does come time to store those things, my preferred method is to can it because this is shelf stable. Um, if I it will last longer in this jar than it would if I put it in the freezer behind me, including even meats, um, pickled stuff, fermented, you name it. Um, I prefer glass jars any day over metal um, canned food that you can buy at a store. And once again, I know that those have their place. Uh, I'm not saying that you know that you should have any of that. I do think that you should have. Um, some different ways of getting food on your table, whether it be store-bought, dehydrated, or freeze-dried, and all sorts of different levels of long-term food security. But we're not really talking about food security as much as we're talking about food storage today. And I like to store my food in glass jars. And so this is also gonna take me into uh, one of the next things, but so I'll show you this, just tomatoes, whole tomatoes. There's some green beans and potatoes. What are those? Um, let's see here, here is a strawberry sauce that we will use like um, over the top of a, like a pound cake, like a strawberry shortcake. That is, um, let's 
So, love, love. Storing my food in glass jars, and that does not just include things that you need to actually can, but I also like to um, use glass jars to um, seal long-term food storage supplies in, like rice and beans and a flour bag. So that'd be on the go. Okay, things that are in your long-term food storage like this is hard white wheat. Um, this is going to go into my next favorite way to store food. It's going to be um, storing food as in bulk ingredients and not necessarily things that are already lost. So I can store this hard wheat and it will last basically almost indefinitely if I store it correctly, okay? Um, I can then turn this into um, any type of sourdough. If I have an ongoing sourdough um, starter, turn this into any type of bread, pasta, any type of baked good that you can think of. Instead of storing lots of spaghetti noodles or something of that nature, can, um, that will only last a few years and I have to go rebuy it again, um, I can just store bulk items. And, ha and make from scratch um, the things that I want to make, which actually saves a lot of space and time. And it, when you're buying in bulk, it will save you a lot of money as well. So I will, I'm actually getting ready to take my bags like this. Um, we bought these from a like an Amish pantry. Um, we have midnight pantries, Amish pantries. We have a lot of those local. And they will sell bags like this. They'll buy, um, they sell like the five gallon buckets of it. You can also buy stuff from places like um, from bake, bakery supply stores, from Pleasure of Standard is a really popular one. Uh, so you can buy wheat. If I buy wheat like this, it lasts a very long time. If I buy a bag of flour for just a little bit less, um, it's only going to be good for a little while and then it can go rancid. Um, and I will have to use a freezer space for it or something else. So definitely the way to go is buy buying things that will um, bulk raw ingredients that I can then make other things with. So when I am going to store these, so just to keep them safe from getting any bugs in them or anything, um, I will just take this bag and I will put it into one of these, like a half gallon mason jar, and then I will vacuum seal it and it will be good for a really long time. I had several bags of these. I could put them all into a um, five-gallon bucket. You could add some oxygen absorbers, and once again, it would be good for a really long time. You can store sugar, grains, um, like oats, barley, wheat, spelt, pine corn, all sorts of things of that nature. Beans, rice, all of your basic staple ingredients. Um, those can be stored away in glass jars. Glass jars are great to keep um, any type of pest out, and then once you vacuum seal them, you are keeping it safe from um, starting to break down because oxygen is everything's enemy. So vacuum sealing it will keep it safe for a lot longer, and that is one of the many reasons why I love storing everything in glass jars and the work seat. even includes meat. If I can meat in um, glass jars, it not only is it shelf stable, I can take it with us if we go camping, once the power is out, um, it saves me energy that I'm not having to run a freezer for, but it also technically lasts longer in the glass jar canned meat does than um, the quality of it versus if I put it in my before it starts to get weird and freezer burn and just funky. Um, so to me, glass jars, win-win, reusable, um, they're just like great. So that is gonna be my next favorite way to store food is in glass jars. Okay guys, one last bonus little thing here. So, you know, trying to store food regardless if it's alive and walking around or if it's 
growing in your garden, whatever. Um, kind of useless if you don't have stored water. Um, so I want to add one more thing to this list, and that is the most important thing um, when it comes to storing food is actually storing water. Um, so behind me, we have a well, and I would, um, that would be on the top of my list if I were going to be buying any um, land that I was going to try to um, grow food and live more sustainably on would actually be to either have a well dug immediately or to pick somewhere that has a spring, a creek, or a well on it because water is actually probably the most important thing because nothing else is going to survive or live without a good fresh source of water. So all of my little animals are out there. They're all underneath a large mulberry tree that keeps dropping berries down for them to eat. Okay guys, so my next tip is going to be berry bushes, berry trees, orchards. That's going to be my next favorite way to store food. So this is a mulberry tree and it is loaded with mulberries. It is yet another great way of storing your food and with minimal um, long-term work. So you can tell this tree is huge and it is loaded with fruits that our animals are all enjoying as they fall down here to the ground. Let's see if you can see it close. Are you eating the mulberries? Are you? You have a purple beak. Have you been eating mulberries? Yeah? <laughs> Alrighty, so let's see if we can zoom in here. You can see how many berries are on this tree. As in having an orchard is a great way to store your fruits long term. And the ducks agree. Hello. 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 Can you say hello? Obviously, when we walk away, it is huge. Um, but we have also we have planted our own little orchard of apple trees, elderberries, and we've planted like 30 blueberry bushes. Um, and so we are working on establishing even more berries and fruits. Um, but we also have um, wild blackberries and raspberries and persimmons um, all around us. And then we have a strawberry farm right down from us. And so having access to lots of fruits that are in season different times of the year are going to provide you with all sorts of very beneficial nutrients, vitamins, and um, yeah, and you'll be able to have fresh fruits eating them most of the year. Um, and so having access to all those extra fresh fruits and berries um, it's going to be another great way to store food naturally. Just hanging out there on the tree or bush waiting for you to harvest them. Okay guys, so that's it. Those are my favorite ways to store food. Um, walking around and growing in the garden and growing on trees and bushes and saving seeds and storing seeds and then um, also bulk items being stored away in those glass jars. So I hope that this has helped you think outside the box a little bit um, and kind of step away from that weird prepper mentality. It is needful. I understand that there are some things that maybe uh, I can see where long-term food storage is always um, has its place, especially when you live in a place that's prone to natural disasters and um, crop failures and such as that. So I, I believe me, I understand that they have their place, but I also don't think you should only depend on um, foods 
that you have just bulk stored and not have a way of replenishing your supply indefinitely. So that's really what this video was more about than anything was um, thinking outside the box. Think of how you can boost your food storage um, naturally. <laughs> These dogs are so loud. And how it can ways to store food um, that replenishes itself. So you need breeding pairs of um, chicken breeds, duck breeds. We have, you know, drakes and and girls here. We have bucks and does. We have roosters and hens. We have matching pairs for some uh, more important heritage breeds um, so that we can continue on with pure blood breeds when we need to by incubating them or even more importantly having broody hens which actually have a hen and chicks are about a week old so cute but having those broody hens having breeding pairs having heirloom seeds or open pollinated seeds that you can seed safe from every year a good water source established orchards these are how people have been storing away oh and bulk storing grains that is how people have survived and been storing their food for thousands of years not hoarding away only um, 20 year shelf life freeze dried foods they people and um, humanity has survived on sustainable practices for thousands of years relying on nature to replenish itself and i think that's just how god intended it for it to be and um, when you do things in a more natural sustainable way um, it breeds abundance <laughs> and it is um, ultimately saves you a lot of money because you are always increasing and always multiplying and um, you're less need for refrigeration and things is that like i said as my milk is out here walking around and my eggs don't need refrigerated and my meat um, is ready to be harvested whenever i am ready for it and not before um, and so I just wanted to have you think outside the box of natural ways that you can store your food and um, live more abundantly and yeah so those are my favorite ways to store food I would love to hear your favorite ways to store food as well I hope you guys have a good day don't forget to like and subscribe